entered lockdown on the back of four weeks of negative trade with our customers being advised to stay at home and there was obviously a nervousness, nervousness to shop. Um, we then had 13 weeks of full closure. So for a business like ourselves, a non-essential fashion retailer with bricks and mortar stores, business completely ground to a halt. Um, whilst in lockdown, we have seen an apparent shift to um, customers shopping on smaller high streets, more locally for essential goods. So I'm hoping that when obviously we do reopen, we do see that resurgence of the local high streets, which will help us in the smaller towns that we trade. On the other hand, we'll have to combat more people getting used to shopping online that maybe never before. Um, it's safer and possibly more convenient. Um, and we also, um, we'll have to take into consideration that there has been a lot of businesses that won't be open, which will leave many more unoccupied units. But we will look for any opportunities that that creates for us in the 15 locations that we trade. During lockdown, we dropped a quarter of our turnover, so £2.5 million pounds gone. Um, June and July, um, obviously, is, is for us um, in fashion retail, two of our biggest months with our summer sale happening in that period normally, and that was obviously effectively cancelled. Um, as a fashion retailer, we take 80% of our stock in at the start of the season. So just before, just before we hit 13 weeks of closure, we had taken... 80% and had paid for very little of it. Um, so we had faced a big debtors list with no circulating cash. Um, quite early on, uh, as we seen that sales were, were we're going to drop off a cliff. Um, whilst customers were being staying at home, we we reacted quite quickly. We cancelled a lot of um, stock that was remaining to come in for the rest of the season, and we pushed out autumn orders to try and offset that the balance of the thirty weeks of closure. We also negotiated, had to had no choice but to negotiate longer payment terms with suppliers. Thankfully, up until. COVID, we have always been timely payers and, and had a great relationship with suppliers, so, so discussions were a bit easier than they could have been. Um, we just couldn't take the hit alone. Um, I think the suppliers had to have a share in the fact that customers were told to stay at home. As a business leader, you're always so used to knowing what to do. And if you don't, you make decisions quite quickly or you speak to um, professional advisors that you've got, got around you um, for advice. Um, in the situ situation with COVID, um, whilst my team looked at me for reassurance, it was one of the first times that I felt, um, I suppose, lost as many others did. And even with my most trusted advisors at hand to make a phone call, I was exactly in the same position. We just did not know what to do initially. It was such an unusual and extreme um, situation uh, to find yourself in. However, we went into projection um, mode pretty quickly. Um, we found ourselves lobbying um, Scottish Government and um, pushing for equal grants that businesses south of the border um, had been given the difference to our business of £300,000. Um, we negotiated with landlords pretty early on. 85% of them you know, worked with us to a certain extent. Um, we tightened up on all orders, um, we negotiated longer payment terms, we sold one of our freeholds so that we were um, debt free with the bank. Um, we used um, Aquatus auctions who were fantastic. And thankfully, it's just under a month before we went into lockdown, we joined the Scot Scottish Retail Consortium and it was uh, invaluable for us through through um, COVID. Um, advice, you know, whether it was simple advice on new legislation and financial help available for for retailers, and just the connections with other CEOs. You know, what were other people doing in the high street? Um, we also found very useful calls with um, other CEOs through KPMG's um, retail team, and they proved valuable also. I'd say that we've always been um, 
to be active, nimble, um, very quick at making decisions. Um, but decisions seem to have to be even quicker um, during lockdown, so we possibly are able to to be even more responsive than we than we were before. Um, we've always been very honest with our teams, open up front um, with performance and um, concerns over performance. But I think honesty um, through COVID to get the um, teams behind where the business was going and how the business was was going to get through um, the situation and also at the other side um, at, after reopening um, just what we could do with the teams um, in terms of agreeing reduced hours um, to protect to protect the business but also to protect as many job roles as we possibly could um, was very important for us. My predictions for, for our sector for um, kind of short to, to medium term is I suppose quite bleak really. Um, I'm assuming the worst and I think that's the right thing to do so that we can offset um, sales and costs. So I'm predicting really that our sales will drop 40% like for like. And that for us is based on us being able to um, have the same marketing strategy. Um, we have a very strong um, database of about 125,000 customers and we mail them regularly. Um, we have an excitement and an energy with our events and stores and there is a hustle and bustle. And ultimately with social distancing in place, that hustle and bustle that we normally create um, is gone. Um, so we have levelled out over the weeks um, for the rest of the year um, and been a, a bit more cautious and, and taken taken another percentage off that. Um, I think also we have to bear in mind that it will be a nervousness to show up in bigger locations of which we have some stores in bigger towns and cities, um, nervousness to travel and public transport. Um, and I also think that um, we have to be prepared for um, inevitably customers spending less. I think quicker decision making, especially when it comes to to decisions centred around um, profitability. So if and uh, where before we might have had stores that we think, right, well, we give it another six months, we'll give it a year, we, we'll do this, we'll turn it around. I think the decisions to, to close unprofitable stores will be made a lot quicker. And I think we'll have to, um, our, our costs will have to be in line with sales. Um, a tighter, tighter staffing, um, multitask rules in the office, um, will be vital and tighter staffing in the stores and of course as demand increases we will build that back up again um, but I don't think we can have it there in the hope that the sales will come back. Our launch online was accelerated in lockdown and that will continue with an opening at the end of July but we will still um, protect our stores with a click and collect service to bring people into the bricks and mortar part of the business. Partnerships with landlords and partnerships with suppliers will be key. And I think um, without one, there is no other. Um, lobbying um, the Scottish Government, um, I think as the retail sector will ultimately struggle when we come to April, where we go for paying um, no rates to, to the cliff edge of going back to pre-lockdown rates will be a real struggle. And I think there has to be some compromise there to protect the Scottish High Street, which I suppose brings me on to my last point. And I think through lockdown, I have realised that the Wilkies is, you know, our business is, is not simply a retailer. We are an investor and proud to be part of the Scottish High Street. And the businesses in Scotland are what, what makes the High Street, which makes us attractive for the domestic market to go for the day and spend time and shop and put money back into the economy but ultimately attracts tourists and we should be proud to walk down the, co the Scottish High Street and I think we can only do that if suppliers, landlords, Scottish Government and the businesses work together to make it happen. <laughs>